Chapter 9 Recharging the Batteries Warm and soft, Katie did not want to move. It was the first time she had enjoyed a long, uninterrupted sleep in total silence. Opening her eyes, she saw the bare rock walls lit by daylight coming through the ventilation openings on top. She was comfortable. Unfortunately, she needed to go to the bathroom. She gave a sigh and pushed aside the thick blankets. A shock of cold went up her bare feet as they touched the stone floor. After tucking a clean centaur shirt under one arm, she picked the dirty clothes off the floor before leaving her room. Down the passageway, Katie pattered by many doors. Some were open. She glimpsed handfuls of young and old centaurs sleeping in clustered family groups for security and warmth. Batya and Petal saw her through one of the open doors. Good morning, Katie, said Batya. Good morning. Can you tell me where the bathroom is? I need to wash. Come, we'll show you, answered Batya as she sprang onto her four legs. They guided her to the washing chamber at the end of the hall. It was a big, airy space with holes, basins, and pools of various sizes on the ground and along the walls. Katie was led to a small hole in the ground. This is for waste removal. Just move that over to flush, said Batya as she moved a hand-sized polished rock on the wall and water rushed in and out an opening in the hole. She replaced the rock and stopped the water from flowing. Katie turned her attention to a tapping sound. Petal was tapping the ground with a hoof to get Katie's attention. The painted centaur stood next to an elevated basin cut into the rock wall. Petal moved a rock to let water flow into it. She shook a canister. White powder sprinkled into her small hands as the water flowed over them. Petal then went to a small pool and pulled a slab of stone out of a slot and shook the canister of the grainy soap powder into the water. When the pool was half full, Petal stopped. With a pair of tongs, Badia brought stones that were in a fire pit along a wall. Petal dropped in stones too. Each one raised the water level. When you are done, just open the other slot. Batya pointed to another stone slab on the bottom of the pool, then left the chamber. Water rushed into the pool. Petal placed a faded folded towel and bristled brush next to the pool before leaving. Katie walked over to a small ground hole and squatted. She felt awkward at first, but eventually did her business. Toilet flushed, Katie went over to the elevated basin to wash her hands. She touched the water, then dabbed the powder. It was a coarse, greeny texture that stuck to her wetted fingers. It was an unusual sensation compared to the smooth blocks of bar soap or liquid soap coming out of pumps at home. Gently, she washed, washed her thin-skinned hands with it. Standing next to the small water-filled pool, she undressed and slowly slipped one leg and then another into the hot water. By the time both feet reached the bottom of the pool, the water was up to her waist. Sitting down, the fo foamy, soapy water rose up to her chin. She sat like this for a while, simply enjoying the relaxing heat. After the long, needed scrub from head to toe, she climbed out, dripping as she wrapped a towel around herself. She slipped on the clean shirt, but felt uncomfortable going bare bottom like the centaurs. She looked at her dirty human clothes, then the bath water. Her mother would say it was a waste to dump all that nice, warm, soapy water. So she soaked and scrubbed the clothes in the water before draining the pool. Katie brought the wet clothes to the sink to give them a rinse of clean water. After wringing water out, she brought the clothes to the fire to dry. She sat on the floor to wait. The light clip-clop sounds of Petal's hooves could be heard before she appeared with a confused look on her face. I just washed my clothes, drying them out now. Hungry, eat, come, said Petal, pulling Katie's hand. Okay, said Katie as she got up. Katie stopped by her room to get her backpack and put on her shoes. Petal hopped on all fours and zipped around like a bunny rabbit, leading the way up the dining to the dining hall. She would pause occasionally to turn around, making sure Katie wasn't too far behind. Young centaurs gathered around where she sat. She was offered warm, fluffy bread, savory pearl egg, egg mixed with a type of cheese and herbs. She drank a surprisingly tasty juice drink of fruit and grass. 
They asked about her home, her clothes, the backpack, and its contents, especially the magical tablet they wanted to play with again. It doesn't work yet. I need sunlight to do it. We are all going to the top after eating, said Batya. Stuffed with all kinds of tasty foods, the young centaurs led the way up the spiral path towards the surface of Altiplano. Katie paused to poke her head into the network of tunnels out of curiosity. She saw the grand hall for gatherings, a library, a training ground, and the edible garden plants that were kept wet by the waterfall. She saw the ghostly pale form of Shasta disappear into a doorway carrying containers of food from the kitchen. Curious, she followed to say hello and invite him to be friends, but the door was locked. She knocked a playful rhythm on the wood and metal door. She waited and waited, but no one opened it. Forget him. He's probably busy with his studies. Never liked to hang out with us. Those magicians are always up to something, said Baku. Let's go. The cool, dark, shaded stone entrance of the sinkhole opened to warm, bright daylight. Exploding with energy, the young centaurs galloped past her with thundering hooves. The colorful, cen the colorful centaurs looked brighter, more vivid in the sunlight. Katie was thrilled to just stand there and watch them jump and kick the air, weaving and hopping over the shrubbery and rock formations that dotted the lush green flatness. Katie walked over to a pile of boulders and opened the tablet's solar panels and angled them towards the brightest sun. Petal came back, prancing and bouncing. She hopped and landed on a boulder next to Katie. What that? she asked. It's a solar panel. It takes energy from sunlight and puts them into these, said Katie while connecting the tablet and batteries to it with cords. Now we wait. It's going to take a while. Quietly, they watched the others play.